In the electricity topic, there really are only a few equations that you need to learn, and I'll go through them now. The first is the definition of current as rate of flow of charge. So we can write current, which we give the letter I, equals the amount of charge that flows, we'll call that Q, divided by the time it takes for that amount of charge to flow, we'll call that T. Now the charge on an electron is very, very small, and as electrons are the things that are actually flowing, that means that we are going to be dealing with some very small numbers. The charge on the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And so we're going to be using standard form, and we're going to be using things like nanocoulombs, maybe even picocoulombs. And so you need to remember that nano means 10 to the negative 9, and that micro means 10 to the negative 6, and that milli means 10 to the negative 3. And we're not going to be dealing with larger numbers, the kilo, mega, giga. We're going to be dealing with these smaller numbers. And of course, pico, which I left off, which is 10 to the negative 12. The unit of current is the ampere. So 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb of current that flows in 1 second. The second equation you need is for the second quantity that you will encounter called potential difference. And potential difference, sometimes called voltage, so we use the letter V, is equal to the amount of work that is done per coulomb of charge that flows through a component. And so work which is done, we'll use an E for energy, divided by the amount of charge, Q. So one volt of potential difference is equal to one joule of energy deposited on a component per coulomb of charge that flows through it. The third equation you will need is the definition of resistance. You'll notice these are all definitions. And so the resistance of a component is equal to the potential difference across that component divided by the current that can flow through that component. And you'll notice the larger the resistance for a given potential difference, the smaller the current of charge that can flow through. A resistance of 1 ohm is the resistance that allows 1 ampere of current to flow through a component when there is 1 volt of potential difference across it. The fourth equation is the equation for electrical power. That is, the electrical power, or the work done per unit time, the energy deposited in a component divided by the time it takes to deposit that energy. So the power is equal to the potential difference across a component multiplied by the current through the component. A power of 1 watt is the power deposited in the component when one joule of energy per second is deposited, and one joule of energy per second is deposited when one ampere of current flows across a potential difference of one volt. Now this is it for equations, but there are two more that you can derive by combining the third equation, that's the definition of resistance, with the fourth equation, that's power. And so if I substitute the third equation into the fourth equation, I can derive an equation P equals I squared R. Or I can also derive an equation P equals V squared over R. In these equations, the terms mean the same things they do everywhere else on the screen, so I won't rewrite them. But please do make note of the square. It's very important you don't forget that. And also, whether the power increases as resistance increases, or whether the power increases as resistance decreases, depends on whether we have a constant current or a constant voltage or potential difference across or through our component. Now, in circuit, is, is, it is very important to get your prepositions right. So current, the current you measure, is the current through a component. And the potential difference you measure is a potential difference across 
a component. We don't say the current in a component or the current across a component or the potential difference in or through a component. We don't say the current or potential difference of a component. We say the current through a component and the potential difference across a component. Now there are two circuit rules of how current and potential difference behave in circuits and when you study A-level physics you will learn these as Kirchhoff's laws. The first of the circuit rules is what current does in a circuit and it stems from the idea that charge is always conserved. Because charge is always conserved, it never vanishes within a circuit, then the current also must be conserved. So if I have a wire which leads to a junction and two wires coming out of this junction, then every coulomb of charge that enters this junction also has to leave this junction. And so if I have one coulomb per second entering this junction, then I must also have a combined current of one coulomb per second leaving. If this is 0 0.25 coulombs per second on the top branch, then the bottom branch must have 0 0.75 coulombs per second. Now I've called it coulombs per second, but we know from our definitions that another name for one coulomb per second is an ampere. And so I could write down that a current of one ampere entering this junction is equal to the current of 0.25 amperes and the current of 0.75 amperes added together. To summarise, the current flowing into a junction is equal to the current flowing out of a junction. And if I wanted to, I could write this symbolically as I1, I2, I3 by saying I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. The second circuit rule is that within a loop, the potential difference gained across a power supply is always equal to the potential difference dropped across other components. Now this is based on the first law of the thermodynamics, or the idea that energy is always conserved. And so if I pick up, let's say, three joules of energy per coulomb of charge that flows through that power supply, and let's say I deposit one joules of energy per coulomb of charge that flows through the first resistor, that means I only have two joules of energy per coulomb of charge left. And if I were to drop off 1.25, joules per coulomb of charge at the second resistor, then when the current passes through the final resistor it only has 0.75 joules per coulomb of charge remaining. And when you add these three potential differences dropped across the resistors together, it will be equal to the potential difference across the power supply. Of course we don't have to call it joules per coulomb of charge, we have another unit for that, as I described earlier, the volt. And so if I have 3 volts picked up by the power supply, then I must have a total of 3 volts dropped off across the components that are connected together in series. But that's separately within each loop. So if my problem looks like this, where I have lots of resistors, but I want to know the potential difference across the resistor that I don't know about, the way I solve this is by tracing around each loop. And let's start with the smaller loop. I pick up 3 volts at this component, I then drop off 1 volt here, I've got 2 left, I drop off 1.25 here, I've got 0 0.75 volts left, and then I drop off 0 0.75 volts there. I have none left when I return to the power supply. So within the first loop, everything we picked up, all the potential difference we picked up, we dropped off. If we look at the second loop, so I'll colour it blue, and where they overlap, things will look green. We pick up 3 volts, we drop off 1 volt, so now we've got 2 volts, but then we go the top route instead. There's a choice, a junction. And if I were to drop off 0.25 volts here, then what have I got left? Well, I had 3, I dropped 1, so then I had 2. I dropped another 1.25, so then I had 1.75. Then I dropped off 0 0.5 volts. So what have I got left? Now I've got 1.25 volts left. 
and I know I've got to drop off on the rest of my journey, 0 0.75, so what have I got in this resistor, dropped across this resistor? It has to be 0 0.5 volts. We can just double check that. 3 volts should be equal to 1 volt across this resistor, plus 0 0.25 volts across this resistor, plus 0 0.5 volts across this resistor, plus 0 0.5 volts across this resistor, plus 0 0.75 volts across this resistor. And hopefully you can see that when you add those numbers together, it does indeed work out 3 volts in, 3 volts out. So we can summarise the second rule by saying that the total potential difference gained by the power supplies within a loop is equal to the total potential difference dropped across the resistors in a loop. One of the consequences of this rule is that the potential difference of two components in parallel must always be the same. Now how those potential differences are shared between components that are in series depends on the resistance of the, those series uh, components. And of course we have the rules we had before that tell us how to calculate what those potential differences are the third equation, the definition of resistance.